Gonzalez. And good morning, I'm Stephan Chase. A small Virginia community focuses on healing today after a gunman killed two young journalists on live television yesterday. And all around the world, folks are coming together to stand with WDBJ, the station where the victims work and that gunman previously worked. WNCN's David Hurst joins us now live outside that station in Roanoke, Virginia with more. David. Yeah, Mike Stefan, obviously, as you can probably imagine, a very emotional morning here at WDBJ. Uh, a lot of tears. A lot of people have come by to pay their honor and respect for those two individuals. If you take a look behind me, you can see just how big that memorial has gotten just in the past few minutes. Uh, multiple people have come by, just left balloons, flowers, cards, just to come see what it's like, just to check things out and pay their respects. Now, this morning was the first morning that the team went on with out Adam and Allison, the reporter and photographer, were such a big part of that morning team. And of course, obviously, everything that happened yesterday. They held a moment of silence at 6.45 a.m. this morning while they were on air. The anchors joined hands and just paused for a minute to remember Adam and Allison, one of the WD, uh, WDBJ anchor, Chris Hurst. He, uh, he, he went on the air and he talked to us earlier. He talked about kind of the emotions that he felt when he went on the air and talked to about his girlfriend, Allison. I don't know. I don't know if what I'm doing is right or wrong. I don't. I don't know if what I'm doing is what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know if sharing these very personal memories that she made for us and no one else that now I want to share is what she would have wanted. But I know what she felt in her heart about being a journalist, which is that you want to share, you want to get the story, you want the truth to get out there. As for Adam, his fiance was a morning producer here, here, and yesterday was actually her last day of work when all this unfortunately transpired. Her and Adam had plans to move down to Charlotte, where she just uh, accepted a new job. Uh, she posted on Facebook today that this whole incident has just turned her world upside down, but she is grateful and thankful for all the love and outpouring of support that her and the station have received just in the past two days. Reporting live in Roanoke, I'm David Hurst, WNCN News. David, thanks so much for your reporting. It's just a tragedy on so many levels, certainly. Well, the first victim, 24-year-old Allison Parker, was a Virginia native and started her career at WDBJ as an intern before returning in 2014 as a reporter. In between her stints at WDBJ, Allison Parker spent time in our state at WCTI, the ABC affiliate along our coastline, as the Jacksonville Bureau reporter. She's a hard worker. It didn't matter what time of day, it was morning or evening. If she got called out for breaking news, she'd go there. She had a passion for this business. And just to see her life cut short at, at 24 years old, it's just it's so very sad. She had such potential. Mm, that's the news director there at that station. Allison was dating the station's evening anchor, Chris Hurst. Though the couple had kept their relationship quite quiet, on Twitter, Hurst said he was numb, writing, she was the most radiant woman that I'd ever met, and for some reason, she loved me back. 27-year-old Adam Moore, the news photographer, is described as a hard worker who was always smiling and respectful. He joined the station back in 2011 after graduating from Virginia Tech. Allison and Adam first met at the station as interns, and and often worked as a team on the WDBJ morning show. He always came with a smile and yeah. do you need me to get something extra and willing to stay late even though he'd already worked a nine hour day. The team there recalling memories and as David previously said, Adam was engaged to the station's morning producer, Melissa Ott, who was working inside of that control room watching the broadcast when the shooting happened live on air. Last night, Ott released a statement on Facebook saying in part, quote, Adam and I will never find a man. I will never find a man so happy, selfless, protective, funny, or charming like you. You were the one. You understood me, my soulmate. I will always love you. The husband of the surviving victim now says she is doing better and is now in fair condition. Vicki Gardner is the executive director of the Smith Mountain Lake Chamber of Commerce. She was the one being interviewed about local tourism when she was wounded. I spoke with Vicki for about um, three, four minutes while she was being transported to the, uh, the emergency room at Roanoke Memorial. Um, she explained what had happened to her and that um, she didn't know how she survived, but she did, and that she loved me. Now, according to the husband, anyone who wants to help can pray for his wife or go out and enjoy Smith Mountain Lake. 
something to do if yeah, you're living in that sure area. Is. Well, we're also digging deeper into the shooter, Vester Flanagan's history, and his motive for targeting those at the news station. WNCN has uncovered a complaint dismissed last year detailing the specifics of Flanagan's employment. In February of 2013, Flanagan was let go. Court documents detail the scene. Roanoke police officers escorting Flanagan from the station. Adam Ward, the photographer who was killed by him, was said to be taking video of that entire ordeal. Flanagan later filed a civil lawsuit against WDBJ, citing racism, a hostile work environment, and unpaid overtime. Now, the suit, filed back in May of 2014, was dismissed two months later. Friends of the Flanagan family issued a statement on their behalf late yesterday. It is with heavy hearts and deep sadness we express our deepest condolences to the families of Allison Parker and Adam Ward. We are also praying for the recovery of Vicki Gardner. Our thoughts and prayers at this time are with the victim's families and with WDBJ television station family. Now, while it is unclear how the shooter, Vester Flanagan, obtained the weapon or if he had anything in his past that would have prevented him from owning a gun, Allison Parker's father, Andy Parker, says he will now work to make it harder for the mentally ill to get guns. It's senseless that her life and Adam's life were taken by a crazy person with a gun. And, you know, I, I, if I have to be the John Walsh of gun control. Well, yesterday, President Barack Obama weighing in on the shooting echoed the call for stricter gun control laws. What we know is that uh, the number of people who die from uh, gun-related uh, incidents around this country uh, dwarfs any deaths that happen through terrorism. And we're willing to spend trillions of dollars to prevent terrorist activities, but we haven't been willing, so far at least, to impose some common sense uh, gun safety measures that could save some lives. In a 23-page fax to ABC News, Flanagan wrote his anger had been building for some time now and said he purchased his gun after the racially motivated church shootings in Charleston, mm. South Carolina yeah. this June. A and tragedy that will be on the hearts yeah, and minds I mean, of so many people. No matter if you're in or out of the news business, right? it's shaking everybody because we're all vulnerable and you just feel for the family because it's just situation. so senseless. Yeah, yep. it is. All right, switching gears now, we're going to focus on the weather. All right, let's check in.